everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight is Serene Sunday, and we're going to talk about how to believe again. I come to you as Druid Niklaus de Klon, founder of the Druid Circle, Druid Order of Blessed Stone and Wood, uh, Druid University to come, and Druid Living to come. So, how to believe again when I thought about this, that I wanted to do this show tonight, it was interesting because I remember from when I was a child, I'll never forget it, I went out to the diner, I don't remember what day it was, it was either on a Sunday after church, or it was either a Sunday after church, or it was a uh, some kind of a special occasion. I'll, I'll never forget it, but I know it was around Christmas time. Maybe a little bit after Christmas. And, um, which is, you know, Yule. So, I'll never forget, I went out, and up until this point in my life, you know, um, I developed a special relationship with, you know, Santa Claus. And Santa Claus, very interesting, you know, not necessarily, uh, um, I guess, uh, he, I, I think he's saint by name in, in Catholicism. I don't necessarily know um, the detailing of his uh, sainthood, but he is saint by name. And it was something so powerful, this relationship that I had with Klaus was so powerful that when I heard the news, I couldn't stop crying. I was a child and it clobbered me. And I had to think about what was it that made that happen? What was it that what was it that brought that into my life? And why did I need to hear that? For a while I hated God. I hated anything sacred. I hated the other world and the reason was was because I had just lost my best friend to make matters worse the reality of this was that he called every year every year he called a special phone call for me for, for me and the kids to ask what I wanted for Christmas he called on the phone me having a special phone call from Santa me having this this this, this direct connection to the big guy and it was really interesting because all of that and all of the other things just made it even worse when I heard the news. Sometimes in life, sometimes in life, we get upset. And there's moments even beyond getting upset and hating the God or gods of your understanding that it goes to the point where we use logic and philosophy to disprove those in the other world. Those that live in the sacred, that which we call the metaphysical world. And when we neglect, I think, metaphysical beings, when we neglect that, when we remove that from our lives, 
we go to a very, very dark place. I've talked to many atheists, and a lot of them have said the same thing, you know, and when you begin questioning an atheist, and you really, really begin questioning them, like, you know, what drove you to this or whatever, and then they say, well, we're all born not believers. In, in not believing in a, in a metaphysical world we're, we're born without that and I, 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 I sort of just I, I, I sort of don't believe that I think that we all are born believers I don't think belief is nurtured in us I think belief is is nature um, it is natural to begin to question well what put all of this here it is natural for us to question well, how did this get here? We're all born the question, well, wait a second, that tree looks like the, the veins in a lung. Um, and, and, and so that questioning leads to us thinking more about our gods or God. And it leads us to thinking more about their existence rather, rather than that which doesn't exist. I think when we go into that state of and, and movement into um, a place that's incredibly dark, a place that says, well, there is no hope. And while we may disregard it, when we say that when we die in this world, when we, when our, when our, when our druidic tetraconomy of, of, of heart, soul, mind, and spirit separate from the body, I, I think it's 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 very important for us to realize that we are natural beings and that we just do not because we're nature we don't just go in the ground that's it lights out so a lot of people would say, well, then what does an atheist stand for? Well, I don't know, because every atheist I've spoken to has a different point of view and says something different. I've even spoken to evangelical atheists, those who try to get out and spread the world word that God does not exist or the gods do not exist. I met many people who are pagan and who are atheists. Many druids who are atheists. And I simply can't see how that's possible. I think that if we do remember believing, if we do remember having that faith in something that is intangible and we lose that along the way on our path it is quite possible that we will get it back many who've been some of the most devout pagans and I would say even devout monotheists or polytheists have lost sight of that. But I also think too that it comes back. I don't believe for a fact, as I stated earlier, I don't believe for a fact that we are born not believing. Because it would support then a sort of tabla rasa a way of saying, well, 
it's just a blank slate that we come into this world knowing absolutely nothing that there's no pre-programming involved in our being in our birth and when we think of term when we think in terms of that and understanding that the tabla rasa just doesn't exist Because how is it that we're able to sometimes just pick up a flute and just know it? How is it that we're able to do things and just know how to do things? I think the reason is, is because there is no tabla rasa. So that then, if there is no tabla rasa, would denounce any belief that someone is born without belief. I think if we meet an atheist, and I and I actually saw many atheists and they'll say, you know, I, I, I try to believe, I try to believe, but my logic just continues to dictate there is no God. There is no gods. There are no gods. They don't exist. They're simply stories. Well, we know that in using the law of attraction, even though that obviously is not the only law, there are 400 and over 420 other ones, but just that sort of cosmic law itself law of attraction says that thought becomes thing that our thoughts create energy and that energy creates tangible things we don't have to believe in wind a lot of people say, well, wind does exist. Right. Because we only see the effects of it. We don't see it. Can we feel it? Yes, but that's because we could feel the effects of it. Right? There are so many other things out there in natural, in the natural order of, 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 of things that are quote-unquote intangible. But the way we see them is by the end result or the, if you will, the consequence of it. We see the, the consequence of love. We see the consequence of wind. And when we begin to realize that the intangible isn't all so far-fetched, we then may begin to believe again. And that belief again in your own understanding of what is sacred to you that belief again will just come back. In in the Marines, we learned that there is no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. And I don't know many people that when we were told that only a few of us were going to come back from Desert Storm by our um, drill instructor in boot camp. I don't think any of us at that point necessarily said, well, well, God doesn't exist. Unless they hated God so much that he didn't exist. The gods exist 
I believe that as a Druid, I can't sit here and honestly tell you that <laughs> the gods are, are fake. They're just made up stories. That the, 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 the stories in, the, in our sacred books, in our, in our sacred oral tradition and written traditions, or oral and written traditions, that they're just made up stories. Obviously, at one point, at one point, someone saw, someone experienced, someone witnessed an event, a supernatural event, where they were able to witness the metaphysical world. And then that story carried through. I think the best stories stand the test of time. And I think that understanding that these sorts of, if you will, um, I, I'd rather not use the word emanation, but... Um, that these stories that, that, that just continue to move throughout history and are undying, but are continual reminders that there is another something out there. If we can begin to think about the birth of the new sun at Yule or Yule. If we begin to think about that new birth, then it might be hoove us to Think about that in almost absolute darkness, the sun will return. I always think about it as this sort of, in this sort of way, I always think about it in a sense of what was it like back then? What was it like back then to not know whether the sun would return or not? I'm not talking about the the priesthood because the priesthood always usually is in the upper uh, class they usually end up in the either in royalty or in white collar uh, classes today they they advise and even those kings who did not believe would still turn to their priests for advice, whether it be in a post-Christian world, a Christian world, or a pre-Christian world, those priests were dependent upon their counsel, their wisdom. So when we think about this idea of how to believe again, we could take that baby step into understanding our sacred things, our sacred relics, our, our, our sacred beings, and thinking about them on an archetypal level first. And second would be to Think about, is it possible at all that they do exist? Myth 
isn't so far away from reality as what we think it is. Myth has always been, always been, not what it means today, because it means completely opposite what it meant, what it means today, it, it's completely opposite than it was originally meant to be. The word myth means report. It means that somebody had reported something, a story. And that story continued to go down the path and remain throughout time. Even in a time, and even in times where libraries were burned, the stories still continue to be. You know, I, 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 I have, you know, I, I was asked at one point, what would I be if I weren't, you know, a teacher or whatever the case is when I was teaching? And I said, you know, I, the first thing I'd be would be a chef. The second thing I'd be would be an archaeologist. And the third thing I'd be would be a folklorist. Because it is in those particular jobs, in those particular vo vocations, that one is able to see more clearly a history, be it from food, from the earth, or from the book, that we would be able to see proof and lineage of these stories to get to a root. And when we got to a root, then we could say, I am now fully satisfied. Our job as a Druid, our vocation, our, our purpose is not at all to evangelize people. Our job is to watch, listen, and observe, and see how the and, 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 and see how the story ends. To be able to say, but Shigobra, it all works out. And give them the hope that they need as atheists to move on, move deeper into simply, well, it just doesn't exist. You're never going to convert. You're never going to get anybody to push them to your side of you. I don't care whether you use, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas's, um, you know, dissertations on 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 natural theology and why God exists, because that's basically what what Aquinas was doing proving the existence of God. And possibly even back then, proving the existences of the gods. You know, there are no gods before me. That in itself, the statement indicates that there are other gods. So, to put it in a way and say that this idea of not believing is something that we need to change. No, no, no. We don't want to do that. We allow and we wait till the moment that they are able to be enlightened. This doesn't necessarily mean that atheists are bad people. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, going 
you know, not going to transmigrate. It doesn't mean any of that. It means simply that they're at a point in their life where they may not want to believe. You can't try to believe. I I tried to believe. I tried to believe. I tried to believe. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. We see evidence of God or the gods in time gone backward. It is only when we look backward in our life that we can say that the gods exist or that God exists. We can only do that looking back. When we look back in time, that's when we can see that there is no answer for certain things that occurred in our lives that were so life-changing and miraculous. Because when there is no answer of something When there is no answer to something, when there is no answer for something, that is when we no longer use logic and we must defer to believing again. We go on and make all the arguments. We go on and make the arguments to or against believing but I think it is almost sacred that we hold our beliefs as true and that we move into believing that the gods exist in the stories the gods exist in the earth gods exist in our sustenance that we eat and drink. Tonight, I'm going to give you your Fariyadol, and that is the Druidic Mantra. I'm going to give that to you first and then we're going to do magic as we usually do at the end of each show I want you to make the following statement I believe in the metaphysical world I believe in the metaphysical world when I know there is nothing else to believe in. I believe in the metaphysical world when I know there is nothing else to believe in. I believe in the metaphysical world when I know there is nothing else to believe in. And that will continue to keep you in a sense believing. It doesn't necessarily mean religion in a way in in the traditional sense which religion means to, to be locked up in chains. That's what the word religion means. But it also means other things too. The idea of of keeping what you hold to be secret, uh, sacred. And in that, I think it's really important that you continue on that path.
tonight's magic, Dreot, is very simple. It's very simple. All I want you to do is to get a stick, a small little stick, okay, twig off a tree, okay, something small, about six inches, and place it in your hands. And what I want you to do with that is I want you to take that stick and I want you to look at it. And I want you to practice, I want you to practice levitating that stick. Bringing it up. How can you manipulate energy, the laws of physics, to raise that stick up? How can you do that? When you begin to think in a way that you've never thought before, while you're believing again. You're believing again. You're jumping out of reality and into a deeper reality. Myth. No psychedelics needed for this. All you have to do is take a stick, put it in your hands, and get it to go off of your hands to levitate it. Say, that's impossible, Jordan Lewis. How can I do that? There are stories. Some of the greatest saints and the gods were able to levitate. That was their, their one power. At least one. Is that nuts to believe in that? Is it crazy to believe in that? Absolutely not. I think it's quite healthy. And the reason why it's quite healthy is because you are going to you're going to do this and when you do this you're going to begin thinking in so many different ways when each and every way you try to levitate it it doesn't work and your mind's going to say well let me think about it this way hmm that didn't work let me think about it this way hmm that didn't work until the stick comes off your hands. There are so many things that's, that, that science cannot prove. There are so many things science, science cannot prove. And that is magic. Until we figure out why things are the way they are and why things happen the way they happen, until we, th until, we, until we make science out of it, then it's only natural then to say, you know what, this is, this is magic. And magic is the metaphysical world brought congruent to this world. It's where the metaphysical and the physical meet. That's magic. So, with that, thank you all for watching. And I hope you learned something. Maybe got a new perspective on something. And understood that this idea of believing again after not is really serenity. It's true serenity. Magic and peace. Now for your blessing.
the gods bless you. May the goddesses keep you. May the metaphysicals shine their light upon you. May your ancestors remain with you forever and ever. World without end, Gidawan. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you on Thursday when we talk about the opposite of Yule being Dubaiety. Whatever time of day it is, make it great. Aranit. Aist le mo hui. Betchegora. Toshefir. Toshefir. Thank you for watching.